This video shows you how to go from zero to a fully functional SFTP server on Windows, including a file transfer and sharing web UI, in minutes. The first part of the installation, as often on Windows, is guided by an easy wizard. Once the setup wizard has finished copying files onto your machine, a second and totally automatic program will configure the initial system services. Once those system services are in place, you'll be shown a URL to continue the rest of the setup process in your browser. Deploying these system services may take some time, so please be patient and allow the guided process to finish. Now click on the provided link to continue the setup process in your browser. A security exception here is totally normal, since the software runs at first with a self-signed certificate. It's safe to accept it and continue. Now follow the guided procedure and provide a few initial settings, like a name for this node, the initial super admin password, and if you want you can enroll in two-factor authentication too. For the sake of this tutorial we will skip two-factor authentication for now. We are ready to log into the super admin UI with the account we just created. The first super admin username is always SA, and the password is the one you just set a moment ago. Now, before we can configure the software we need a license, don't worry if you don't have one, you can request Atrial license with just one click. If you already have a license activate it now. With that out of the way we are now ready to create our first virtual SFTP site. This is also a guided process, and it only asks you to provide a few pieces of information. Since we have an ultimate license let's keep the recommended bindings and also add one for the web client web UI. Configuring the bindings is very easy and should be familiar to everyone with a basic knowledge of networking. The final step creates the virtual site in its associated system service, so it may take a little while. Once the virtual site is ready, you will be asked to create the first admin profile for it. Select its username, password, and the permissions you wish this particular admin to have. If we have done everything correctly, we can now start the virtual site, and it will run without issues. Bingo! Now it's finally time to log into the virtual site's admin UI and start adding file systems, users, and other important settings. Log in here with the admin profile you just created for this virtual site. You are immediately welcomed by the dashboard which gives you a comprehensive real-time view of what's going on in your virtual site. Let's now add our first virtual file system, for now let's use one that points to a local directory, you can even encrypt it at rest if you want to. Depending on the license, Simplify Server also support S3, Azure, Google Cloud, and SFTP virtual file systems. Now it's time to create our first user account. The creation process is very easy and should be familiar to anyone who has used a file transfer server before. Type the user's initial password twice for confirmation. Select which subsystems this user is allowed to use, which virtual file system is its home, and which permissions this user will have on it. There you go, we have our first user, who at the moment is only allowed to log in via an SFTP client. We strongly recommend you to take a look at the humongous amount of settings Simplify Server allows you to configure for each user account, it's extremely granular and flexible. If your license allows scripting, you can even modify the behavior of the SFTP server for this user alone, by simply triggering your own scripts via a rich set of event handlers, but this is a topic for a different video. Since this is the first run for this virtual site, please take a moment to configure all of its settings to your liking. There are general security settings, and settings that are specific to each supported protocol handler. 
Advanced system administrators have the option to configure very fine-grained settings like individual cipher suites for TLS or individual key exchange algorithms for SSH. And of course you can customize logos, disclaimers, welcome messages, and all the settings that affect the user experience. You can set speed limits, configure how to send out emails, and fine-tune the logging subsystem. Last but not least you can create and or import SSL certificates and SSH host keys of various kinds. Now let's head over to the web client UI and see what happens. If you recall, when we created this user account we only gave them permission to use the SFTP protocol, so web client should not let us log in. Good. Our security works. Now let's go back and edit this user, give it permissions to use web client and its sharing functions, and then come back here and see what happens. As expected this time web client logged us in without a hitch. The web client UI should feel very user friendly. It's a web based file manager that features a very familiar user experience. Just like you would with Dropbox or Google Drive you can share individual files or even entire folders. Let's create a directory, upload some files into it, and then share it. To upload files into a folder you can use drag and drop or select them via the common Windows file selection window. There you go. Now we have some files in that folder. Let's go check out what the recipient of our shared link can see. The shared object is password protected so we have to type in the password to unlock it. As you can see the recipient of the shared link is boxed inside of the folder that was shared with them, and can only perform the actions they were allowed to do. In this case we can download the files inside, individually or as a single zip archive. Last step. Since at the end of the day this is an SFTP server, let's check that we can indeed log in using an SFTP client. Bingo! We're good to go. Our SFTP server on Windows is up and running and perfectly functional. Thank you for your attention. Please watch our other YouTube videos and come visit our website for more information.